Hi everybody, it's Donna, Doodlebug Stitcher here on Flosstube, and I'm back again. Um, I know, it's like all of a sudden now I'm doing all of my uh, videos on a timely fashion. So, welcome. If you're new, welcome. Thanks for joining me. If you're back visiting me again, thank you so much for joining me. I um, Viewership is so important and we're such a, a stitching community and we kind of support each other so I appreciate it so much um, those of you who come back week after week and send me such nice comments um, and so we're here to talk about cross stitch um, before I do I'll just catch you up real quick um, my Husband is away this week on a uh, trip for work. Um, he is due to fly home tomorrow evening and we go to pick him up. I think his flight gets in on Saturday at like seven in the morning. So um, that'll be exciting to go and get him and have him be home. It's been, uh, it's been kind of taxing because I'm here alone with McKenna. I mean, McKenna's in camp this week, so it's been a little, easier. Today's been um, kind of weird because McKenna is doing on Thursday, they're in a day camp from Monday through Friday and the, then the Thursday night they have an, what they call their sleepover or their sleepaway night. Um, so she was really excited to do that. I didn't, I hadn't even talked to her about it beforehand and then when we went to drop off on Monday they mentioned it and she was so excited so I asked my husband what he thought and he's like it's up to you if she wants to do it and so she wanted to do it so we had to you know pack up the sleeping stuff and you know pajamas and clothes for tomorrow and they're gonna feed them dinner they're gonna have a campfire and do songs and then they're gonna have movie night in the cabin and then sleep and then get up tomorrow and have breakfast. So mommy is alone and I was, you know, I was holding back the tears this morning because she's never been, never slept away from us except for my mom and dad's. So this is an experience. So mommy is suffering from separation anxiety today. So I thought, what else should I do? I'll record a video. It'll give me somebody to talk to. <laughs> So it's just me and the dog, Poppy and I, today. And I'm in a different setting. I'm actually in um, the recliner chair, so if I swivel or move around, I just wanted a more comfy chair. So um, I apologize for the blank space. There's pictures above me, but you can't really see them. So, because um, I'm sitting down. So, um, again, um, so that's been going on this week and I have, um, I'm still recovering from my surgery last Thursday. I can't get my phone to respond here. Um, anyway, I wanted to do my, um, talk about just briefly, I have, because of my cancer treatment, I had a port. Um, it was right here on me. Um, and they used that as an access point, um, kind of like a central line, to be able to give me my chemo meds during treatment. And during my first post, um, I had to go and have a CT. And during the CT, they noticed a lot of um, plaque buildup, not only around the port, but around the line where it entered um, my vein and because of that they were it was it's very troublesome because that plaque could break off and get into the vein and I it could cause a stroke basically so they immediately wanted to get it out um, to the point where I had the appointment and found out about it on a Friday the following Tuesday they called me and my surgery was scheduled for Thursday so they really wanted to jump on this um, so they went in and took it out, no complications. Um, it's been a little sore, um, which going in, it, it, it's been a little different. Um, I ha was able to take the bandage off this weekend on Sunday, but the Steri strips are still there, and so it's a little troublesome and worrisome. So I have to be careful with like putting a, my purse on my shoulder or um, when I'm in a passenger seat, um, 
the shoulder strap kind of hits it so um, I you know have to I've been, you know dealing with that so but otherwise I've been fine I've just been you know kind of taking it easy on that um, and besides being home alone there's nothing other to do but stitch yay stitching so um, First things, I've been uh, continuing to work on my um, my stitch along, or not stitch along, but my round robin project for Country Stitchers. Um, hi, Liz and Deb. Hi. Um, so, our group of four, um, we've been, you know, keeping in contact with one another. I just, before I started filming, just got my package from Betty, um, and she shipped it to me a little early because she wanted to make sure that I got it. She was getting going on vacation, and so if she didn't ship it to me now, she would not be able to ship it to me until like the latter or the middle of August. So I told her to go ahead and ship it out. Um, I'm still finishing mine up. Um, and the person that I send to is local, so I had just have to. Her name is Lisa. Um, she's Blue Hen Stitcher on Instagram. So if you want to go follow her, um, so I just have to figure out with Lisa if we are going to meet up in exchange or if I'm going to just mail it to her because she lives like 15 months away from me. Um, and then I've been. Um, I've been back and forth as far as whether or not I wanted to show you the design or make it a surprise for when every because the design that I stitched is the same design that I'm going to be stitching on everybody's project. So I am going, I've decided that, what do I want to do? I'm going to show you. I might as well because everybody, you know. If you want to be surprised, then don't watch. <laughs> but I wanted wanted to kind of show off because I won't get this back until it's complete. So that might be a few months. But I what I had done is I had taken elements from Plum Street samplers, um, specifically um, the Babushka's bees and the Harvest Keeper designs, which are two of my favorites. And I also took elements from um, the Primitive Hair and a freebie um, design that they had on their website. So I took those two elements and kind of um, mashed, it was like a stitching mashup, <laughs> basically. If you don't know what a mashup is, Google it. Um, but I basically meshed those two together to make this design. And I still have a few um, letters to um, stitch and I have to do my initials um, but that is it and I'll zoom in there so that is my motif for the primitive um, round robin and so I still have to add a few bees um, they're gonna go um, in this area and down here and then the letters um, I have to finish here and it says Medbon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. My French is awful, but M-A-B-O-N, which is French, um, a French term for the autumnal equinox, which I thought was really kind of went with my color palette and because I wanted to have this piece to be able to hang up in the fall. Um, that's why I chose the colors that I did. So I'm really, really, I never really designed anything. And it's not that I really designed it, but I kind of changed it up um, a little bit. And, you know, with the colors and the patterning that I did on the B skip. So I'm really, really happy with it. Um, so that's what I've been working on this week. I'm trying to finish that up so that I can get it off to um, Lisa. And then. I'm prepping again for um, two stitch alongs that will be starting um, on, ironically, on September 1st. So, um, crafting between stitch, uh, crafting between stitches, um, talked about this in her recent video. And yes, I am going to be participating with you guys. 
So, um, and I showed this in my last video. This is Vintage Stars from Jeanette Douglas. And um, this was a really tough one to find. Um, so you can see that pattern there um, for this Vintage Stars. So what I decided to do is when I first um, saw her video and she talked about this and I knew I wanted to do Vintage Stars, I envisioned being able to have it hanging up year round. And so my goal was instead of doing all of the different colors is I wanted to do variations or shades of colors that would coordinate with our living room. And so I pulled this off the couch so you could see. These are the colors that I, my, my living room is decorated in. So you can see there, and I apologize, there's a lot of light. I don't know why, but um, so this pillow has shades of teal and chocolate brown and kind of a grayish, a grayish beige or a, a brownish gray. So this is kind of the color palette I was going for. I can't seem to center myself here. Everything's backwards. So anyway, so that was the color scheme I was going off of. And I am stitching this on, and I'm trying to get it without knocking everything off the table. I'm stitching it on 36 count uh, Liberty Gathering Gray by R&R. &R. So this is the color fabric. I'll hold it up here. It's kind of hard to see, but that's the fabric that I'm going with. Um, and it's really pretty. It doesn't have a lot of modeling. So then the hunt has been on to figure out colors. And so I, I didn't want to do DMC if I didn't have to. And so I pulled from my extensive collection of threads, I full, pulled three shades of classic color works. And I'm still trying to figure out the browns and the grays because the letters on this, I'm going to do in like a darker brown, like a chocolatey color. Um, and then I still have some like grayish brown shades that I might do in DMC unless I can find them in over dyed. But the colors that I found are from Classic Color Works and they kind of all, I'll hold it up here. There are those shades of kind of tealy. And I saw some other colors, Classic Color Works yesterday that I was looking at and they were more blue than they were green. It's so hard to find the right shade. So the colors that I'm um, leaning towards are deep fennel. And again, I'll hold that. Deep fennel by Classic Color Works. Um, Saint Bernard, which, you know, I don't know about you, but when I think of Saint Bernard, I don't think of this color, but I, you know, I'll go with it. And then tartan plaid, which again, tartan plaid to me is like reds and greens and golds, but it is what it is. So that's what I'm leaning towards. I still have to figure out the, the browns or the grays um, for the flosses. Um, and then I'll hopefully be able to start that on Mon or on the first. Um, and then the other project that I have kitted up and ready to go is my um, my Tis the Season Sal, um, which is um, online. Um, and it's been talked about um, many, many times before. Um, the Tis the Season Sal, it's featured on Facebook. A lot of YouTube uh, floss tubers are doing it as well, and I'm just trying to pull up the group here on my phone. Way to be organized today, Donna. Um, if you've watched me before, you know this is this is how I roll. 
Um, so this is the Floss Tube 2018 Tis the Season Sal. And it's a group on Facebook. There you go. Um, and we, uh, she announced yesterday um, that um, we are almost at 500 members, which I think is just crazy. Um, I, I'm just like totally blown away that um, that Lynette, um, we're almost at 500 members. I can't believe it. And um, so a lot of you are doing this. Um, Donna Ray um, just um, posted her YouTube video and she talked about, she actually took you to, with her to pick out her fabric, which I'm loving her fabric choice. I'm gonna have to get me some of that fabric, not for this project, but for some others. Um, and she had, like many of us, had gotten the um, Victorian Motto Sampler Shop threads that were custom dyed by Nancy Turner. And this is how they came, and they were so pretty. They're labeled, and um, now Donna mentioned or decided that she was going to substitute the red from this set of over dyed flosses with Gloriana Silk. And I have to say that um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And so I decided that I was gonna do the same thing. So I'm going to be substituting the um, Gloriana Silk in poinsettia with this poison apple. But you can see, I'm still gonna use this poison apple because I have a few projects that I'm going to definitely um, love that red with and so as I mentioned last week I decided to stitch with points um, picture this plus uh, heritage fabric and my the piece I got has a, a lot of modeling on it look at all that modeling it's so pretty so anyway, so the colors that, that Nancy Turner dyed for us for this um, were the Poison Apple. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm gonna lay them out and show them um, individual or on the fabric when I'm done here. Um, the white is Vanilla Pudding, which I would love some Vanilla Pudding right now. That makes me hungry. And then um, Pumpkin Carriage. I never was an orange fan, but I love me some pumpkin or spicy colored flosses. Then she did Scarecrow, which is gorgeous. Um, it does remind me of, of, of the dried out uh, corn husks. Um, Attic Tea, which is this really darker green. Really pretty. Um, Tortoise shell, which is another green. And they'll make sense once you see them on here. Mud pie, which I love. It's kind of like a dirty, dirty grayish brown. And then moss, which is more gray. I consider moss more green, but this moss is gray. So let me just hold all of these up with the fabric. It's like I need a third hand. So you can see, let me hold this up so you can see better how these colors look. And so they're so pretty and I'm really, really liking how they're going to look. So I'm really excited to start this. Um, I know a lot of you commented um, in the Facebook group that you would, you're kind of all itching to start this now even though we're supposed to wait and start it on the 1st of September. Um, some of you have already started this and maybe put it aside. And so um, I think that's where a lot of the commentary had come from that those of you had had already started want to pick it up and just start doing it right away. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, be good and not start anything um, until the 1st so that we're, everybody's on an even playing field. 
And then um, I happened upon, um, this shop has been mentioned by um, Pam and Steph, Just Keep Stitching. And they have a coupon code that's going um, right now um, that is um, usable, I believe, until the end of September. Go and watch their videos. Um, their last several videos um, mention their coupon code, and it's for 15% off. And so I saw this fabric that she offered, and I, I thought it was perfect, not just for the stitch along, but for me in general, because it's one of my favorite subjects. Um, that I kind of display in the winter time and so I got this project bag from her and it, I love this fabric it's cardinals you know and it's got a little bit of gold flecking in it um, and it's per the perfect size it fits everything um, my book and my flosses and my fabric so everything is ready to go um, when I'm ready to start. And I love the bag because it has this little covered button um, hang, you know, zipper pull, which I think is perfect. And mine has the little cardinal face on it. Um, so that project is going on. And then I've got, you know, I've, I've been pulling projects and trying to kit things up. Um, so that um, as the rest of the year progresses, I'll you know, have stuff ready to go. Um, one of the things I showed you last week was um, a pattern that I had um, gotten um, from the Scarlet, well, the designer is the Scarlet House, it's Penny Pumpkin. Um, I had been inspired by um, uh, Pam um, at Just Keep Stitching. Um, she had bought this pattern and I thought it was great. And so I started pulling the flosses. And then I happened to, yesterday um, I was up in Lancaster and I had stopped by a shop there called Stitches Unlimited. And I picked up just a few skeins of floss and some needles and a chart which I'm going to show you. Um, but mainly I went to like look at colors um, for different projects and make notes because it's hard when you're online and you don't have a shop that, pardon me, I need to just move myself there. There we go. That's much better. Sorry about that, folks. Um, so anyway, I had gone up there to look at different flosses and colors and make notes. It's very hard to, um, you know, make color choices when you don't have the flosses in person and you're not able to kind of lay them next to each other to see how they work with one another. Um, so in the aspect of having a, a LNS or a shop that carries all of these things um, available to you, I so appreciate those people who do have those types of shops and they can go and, and, and do that. So. Um, so I went, uh, while I was there, um, I was looking through fabrics and they had, you know, the general, you know, beiges and ivories and that kind of stuff in the higher counts. And I told her that I was looking for like this gray color and she opened up I, she goes, well, what count? And I said, anything between a, tw like a 32 and a 40. And so she pulled this piece out from Lakeside um, called Misty Rain. And it was it was a, the rest of the piece that they had. Um, and she measured it out and it was 11 by 17. And I thought, well, regardless, I don't know what I'd use it for, but regardless, I'll go ahead and take it. I'm sure I'll find a project. And so I'll hold that up. It's this really pretty, it's a gray, but it has a tinge of blue in it. And I got it home and I was looking through stuff last night and I thought, oh, I have that penny pumpkin. It would work perfect with that. And the fabric that this chart calls for is wood smoke from Lakeside on 40 count, vintage wood smoke. And so this is just, this is still Lakeside, but I thought, well, it would work. And so I laid out the flosses for it and this isn't all of them because I still have my white um, 
to pool and I'm waiting on the wood trail um, one but these are the rest of the colors for it um, and this is all gentle um, arts flosses but I thought oh it's gonna work perfectly so you can see those colors I apologize it's really overcast here today so I'm not getting the best light anyway so I have that now and I was really happy with that so I'm really excited that I have fabric and this will be kitted up to work on and hopefully it'll be a quick stitch I really like the bunting detail on that um, corner so I'm really excited to do that and that's the one thing I love about these fabric project bags is that I can put everything together the fabric the flosses the chart and then I can put this in a bin and it's ready to go um, so I'm you know really excited about getting having those bags and making that making sure that um, I can work on them and then I I have some haul well I shouldn't say I have some haul I have a lot of haul um, and this is stuff that has just been over time that I've been waiting on um, and stuff to, you know like that to show you so the first thing I want to show is um, this I had um, found on Facebook a seller that makes these little ort they're made of fabric, the like little ort bins. And I wanted something cute to store my orts in. And I liked the fact that this was fabric and it was an unusual shape. And um, I contacted her and I told her what I was interested in. And um, she showed me some fabric options and she made this, let me choose what color buttons I wanted. And she is from the UK and her shop is, have my little list here um, she is Nicola Smith and again I'm not prepared apparently be crafty bags it's B E E crafty bags on Facebook and I'll link her below in the video um, and she was really quick she stitched this right up and got it off to me and it came to me very timely um, so um, definitely check her out if you are so inclined and then I had somebody was de-stashing not uh, cross stitch um, charts and things but like accessories which I thought was kind of interesting and one of the things that she had available was this little dish and I didn't realize it at the time but it's from Crate and Barrel which we don't have a crate and barrel around here and again and it says pins in it and I thought well that's so cute I can stick it because I'm always like worried worrisome about like pins and things like that and so I thought that was really cute and I can sit it on my table so I got that and then I got well my mom found this for me and this is a flower frog and I already have my scissors in it and if you're not familiar with what flower frogs are they're a little um, they're made of glass usually sometimes they're made of metal or um, I think mostly glass but this is carnival glass this is from like the 30s and 40s um, and it has holes in it and you would stick this in a vase with the holes and then you would put your flowers in the holes to kind of arrange it so it's like a flower arranging tool and if you're not familiar most of you probably already know this so you're probably like watching this going oh, I'm not dumb I know what this is so anyway a lot of people buy these flower frogs and use them to store their scissors and I thought that is the coolest idea so that's what I wanted it for I asked my mom I'm like do you know what a flower frog is and she was like duh yes I know what a flower I have like four of them and I said well I'm looking for a flower frog and so and she was like for what and so I told her and she was just cut you know gave me the glazed 
the glazed look on the eyes and she's like oh okay so anyway she found this for me so I'm very excited to have that to keep my flower my my flowers to keep my scissors um, you know in in line and in order and then um, oh there's been so much here so one of the things I got was the threads from a D stash and this is a brand I'd never heard of Carrie's threads so if, um, they're hand dyed silks um, and so she had a bunch of different colors and so I I think I claimed like five or six of them um, and so I'm interested to see what I'm gonna have to go on to this website and see what other colors um, they have and so I'm gonna use this notebook so that you can see the colors it'll show up against the white so this color is called um, Chimera and I don't know if you can see but it's a really really dark almost eggplant purple it's really pretty and then I got this color called Night Storm which is kind of like a black and a blue blended together really pretty and then I got two skeins of this color. And this is called Tossed Greens. And it's got shades of green and gold. Um, you know, definitely would work for like um, plants and grass and things like that, which I thought was really interesting, um, especially with all the fall, the fall stitching that I wanna do. And then this color is called Sunshine. Reminds me of sunflowers. So again, the golds and oranges never ever were in my wheelhouse until I'm probably gonna say a couple years ago. And I just gravitate towards those colors, especially for fall. Um, I'm all about sunflowers and, and bees. And I think that's what it is. Um, so I ha I've been get I have a lot more of this color family in my floss options now. Um, and then this last one of the Carrie's Creations flosses is called Grace, Grape blah, blah, Grape Flip, and it's a really pretty purple. Reminds me of um, pansies. Um, so. Um, I got those this week and then I got some um, it was another uh, on the D stash um, and she had various things she had like needle minders and um, things like that so I got a few things from her and so I got this needle minder they again, no prep. I didn't prep. I just taken these right out of the bag. So I got this needle minder because in this household, we're all about the unicorns. I think my daughter wants to grow up and become a unicorn. Um, so she's all about the rainbow and the unicorn, which I'll have to remember next year for her birthday. And then from the same seller, I got, she also had um, some counting pins, which I've never used. I've actually used just regular straight pins, but these were very pretty and decorative. And so I thought for like bigger projects, I would do that. Um, so I got two of these that are ladybugs, which is where my channel name comes from and, and my kind of online profile. And these are little counting pins with ladybugs on them. And then I got some also from her that are bees. Because you can't have, you can't go through life without some bees. And then in a, on the B, oh, this is another needle minder. And this one I got because it was 
very retro and it reminds me of the ukuleles from Hawaii where we got married. We actually brought my oldest nephew who was now, who just went to Hawaii on his honeymoon um, earlier this year. Um, I can remember bringing him back a ukulele and it was, it was, it looked just like that. And that was his um, gift from Hawaii. And then um, these counting pins. And so I got, they're both kind of stars. This one here is like more patriotic, red, white, and blue. And then this one is just this uh, um, iridescent star. And then the last thing I got from her was a scissor fob, um, which you can clip on your scissors. If I can get it to work. I can't get it to open because I'm trying to do it with one hand or one hand. But anyway, it's a scissor fob and it has a little B detail there, which I thought was really cute. And I just broke my finger now. First world problems. Um, so I got those and what else? Um, I got fabrics from a company I'd never heard from. Um, again, D Sash. Um, but this dyer is called shipsmanner.com, so I'm gonna have to look into that. And so this is um, 32 count Lugana. Um, and these were, I guess, their um, fabric of the month. So this is called June Prim. It's so pretty. And I like the modeling detail. I think I could find a fall project, maybe something with some pumpkins to stitch on this piece. And then the other piece that I got from our same um, same brand, Ships Manor, um, and this one is called, this is Jobelin 32 count. So 32 count Magana, 32 count Jobelin. This one is called Frosted Blueberries. And it's got some pretty modeling on it as well. So, um, so that's exciting um, to find some new um, fabric options. I've got some fabric that I'm going to try to dye in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll probably go safe. Um, I haven't delved into the RIT dyes or anything like that. I've kind of just stuck with the coffee tea dyeing. Um, so I haven't really decided if I'm going to do that or not. Um, this is something that I, um, this was an online download um, from Cottage Garden, Garden Samplings, I think. I don't know if somebody else is doing this as well, another floss tuber. Anyway, I pulled it and pulled all my flosses. And now I just have to figure out fabrics. Um, so I'm going to do that because it's got a cardinal on it you know me and my cardinals cardinals and bees I'm gonna stitch it um, then I got this from um, Rita on Facebook and these are a bunch of buttons Jabco buttons, um, mainly um, ladybugs, um, a black sheep, a pineapple, and a holly leaf that she was destashing. And then along with it, um, she destashed this, which is a chart from just another button company. And it includes the buttons. And I thought, well, that would make a cute little small to um, have for the spring um, for like Easter um, and then I think I from her I also got this which is a shepherd's bush button and it's a bee skip um, and then I also got this stuff is all destash and I have decided that I need to stay off the destash board um, 
for you know a few at least a few weeks because um, I got other things I need to concentrate on um, I got this chart God bless America the only thing is that this chart um, this was sold without the charm and the charm is a Lizzie Kate charm so I'm having a hard time finding this um, flag charm um, I was going to even try calling Lizzie Kate, even though I know that they're retired, but maybe they can tell me who has it. Um, so if you know a shop that has this charm, the flag charm that goes with this, if you could please like comment below or message me on Instagram or through YouTube or anything, but if you could let me know where I can find this charm, it, it's like, it's bugging me that I can't find it. And then I also got this in the D stash. I'm not doing this series, which I'm kind of, I kind of wish I had done it, but I bought this specifically for the September design. And this is the Lizzie Kate yearbook, um, September and October. Um, but I wanted that specifically for this design here. And it comes with it, you know it's a flip it so it comes with both months and so I have the October now as well so I hate doing I hate doing stuff like this where you don't complete the whole thing anyway I wanted it for September for the back to school vignette um, that I would like to have and then she offered this kit and somebody snatched it up and I was like, bummer, I really wanted it. And then she messaged me and said, I found another kit, would you want it? And I'm like, yes, please. So this is Buzz from Lizzie Kate. And it comes with just the green linen and the buttons. I guess, because then you can finish it any way you want. I don't know that I would make it into a pillow, but um, I might do something fun with it. So I got those. And then I got, um, I had mentioned when I went up to um, the shop yesterday, um, Stitching Unlimited, Stitchers Unlimited. I can't remember the places I've gone. Is anybody else like that? Where, you know, they go someplace and then forget what it was or who you met. Stitches Unlimited, thank you, God. Anyway, so while I was there, I also picked up this Plum Street Designs. This is Cereal Bowl Collection um, of Sampler Lessons. This is Lesson 3, and I got it mainly because of the bee skeps, the bees design. And so I'm going to have to look into that. Um, and then I... This was on this stuff was all on D stash and um, eBay. So a few of you may know I used to have a lot of cross stitch stash. Um, and I ha I collected it from like the early 90s on. And it made its way from Delaware to Florida where my ex-husband and I lived and then when I when we got divorced I made sure that I got all my cross stitch stuff that was you know part of the the property that was you know that I took with me um, was all of my cross stitch supplies and I had fibers and I had fabrics and I had charts and charts I had binders and, and containers full of charts and so some of this, yeah, I had a little, a few bins of, that were in Rubbermaid containers and then the rest were in boxes from, from the move. And um, we had them in storage. And then when we moved into this house, because we have a full basement, I had them in the basement. And we had an unfortunate issue with some flooding in our basement. And when that happens, um, all of the stuff that was in boxes um, got completely ruined. So I lost a lot of um, my charts and my fabrics and my flosses um, because they were not stored 
it was kind of like a learning lesson. They weren't stored properly um, or the way that I should have stored them. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of that stuff got completely ruined and had to be trashed, which I totally regret now because, like, I lost charts and things, projects that I had been working on that couldn't be salvaged. Um, and so I have struggled um, since getting back into cross stitch. I have struggled to try and refine those designs. And in some cases, the designers no longer exist. Um, point in hand dimples designs. I had almost their his entire um, collection of charts, um, stuff that the designer himself had gifted me, and lost them. Lost them all. Um, so I've been searching through DStash um, posts and on eBay for certain things. Um, I had been looking for, I had posted it in search of that I was looking for um, the Secus, I hope I'm saying that right, Secus and Company designs because I had the buttons for the design but I lost the chart in the, in the, um, the great, I call it the great flood. In the great flood I lost the charts but I had the buttons still. Um, so I tried to find it. So she had messaged me like, hey, I have watercolor lighthouses. Would you want it? And I said, absolutely. And then she showed me a bunch of other ones that she had and she had, which I didn't own it before, but now I do, watercolor ladybugs. Look at those ladybugs, oh my gosh. So we got to chit chatting and that was what, when she said, oh, by the way, have you looked on eBay? I don't use eBay that much. And so I went on eBay and looked for this other one. I have this already kitted up. It has all the flosses. It has the fabric. It has the buttons. But again, the great flood took the chart. And so I went hunting for it and I found it at some, some shop. I ended up paying more for shipping than I did for the chart. But I have it now. And this is watercolored birdhouses. So I'm so thrilled that I was able to find it. And then also through eBay, I was able to replace some other charts that I lost in the flood. Um, one of which was Bee Bumble from Sisters and Best Friends. And I'll show you that again. Bee Bumble. And then Fancy That, oh, I'm so sad that Fancy That is no longer around because I just love their stuff. It's very primitive. Um, strawberries for Sale by Fancy That. And then also um, I got this, again had the buttons, didn't have the chart. Now I have the chart again. This is Hop Hop Hop. And then Sisters and Best Friends, this is Beatrice. And then this is Cold Toes Warm Heart. And I wanted this um, to stitch this long piece here on um, the, um, I can't think what it's called. It's like, um, you make like a, like a bell pull out of it and it has the edge on the sides and I forget what that's called, but you know, somebody will call me out on it later, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, I wanted to stitch one of the, that long design on that. And then I also got this 3D stash. This is Lizzie Kate Hocus Pocus. This will be a quick stitch. I think I have the fabric or something similar that I'm gonna stitch it on. So I need to pull that. And then Amanda, had this kit de-stashed. Um, this is heart and hand. And it is 
the fabric and the button for it along with the chart. Um, it's a kit from Heart and Hand. And this is called Teacher's Desk. And I saw it and I was like, oh, that is too stinking cute. How perfect is this for a teacher's gift? So I decided that that's what's going to happen this year. Kiddo's going into second grade, so her teachers are getting stitched. Yeah, I don't even know who a teacher is. Hopefully it's not a man. Because if, if it's a male teacher, I don't know if he'd appreciate the stitching gift. But anyway, um, several projects coming up with um, stitching gifts um, are being planned. This is another one that I found. This has been on my wish list from Lizzie Kate from like forever. Because this chart, this is number seven. That's how old it is. And I could not find it for, to save my life. And um, when she announced her retirement, it wasn't even available. Um, so to my teacher, and I found it on eBay, and it was a, um, a there was a make offer, and so I made my offer, and they accepted it. So I got that. So I'm like really super excited to get that. Um, I forgot where I had left off. And then I had gotten. This in a de-stash, this is Little House Needleworks Honey Bee Samplings. And then this is Frolic in the Foliage. I liked this because it's pumpkins and everything. I'm probably going to have to do a color conversion because it calls for Weeks Dye Works. I don't know about you. I mean, I'll use Weeks. But I find that I don't get the same um, full coverage that I like um, with Weeks as I do get with Classic Colorworks and with General Arts. Um, so if it's a chart that uses primarily Weeks, I try to like convert it over. Um, but um, yeah, so that's kind of like what I do. And then I got this, which is a Lottie Daw design, and it's called Rooster. And I thought, I don't know about you, but this picture, it's very dark. It's like hard to see. Um, and they called for it on a birds of a feather dyed um, color called Sparrow, which I think is really dark. So I'm, I'm sure it would turn out much better. It uses General Arts threads, um, which I have a lot of these colors. And the stitch count is really little. It's 79 by 128. So I think I'm going to go through my like remnant pieces and see what I can find and maybe stitch it up on something that's a little bit lighter and so the threads will pop a little bit more. And then I also got this. This is um, the Victoria Sampler Cardinal. Somebody was de-stashing it. And let me tell you, this chart is well loved. It's got little, um, it's got highlighting on it. It's got notes um, for floss color changes that were made by whoever stitched it. So I'm loving the fact that Someone else used this, you know, and loved it very much, and now I get to give it some love. So that was really cool. And then I got, um, this was part of a de-stash that I got. Um, this was um, hands-on design, a little cottage which I like and I think I'm definitely going to um, do different colors. I have some classic um, color works, well back then it was Crescent Color Works, um, that I think I'm going to do and that way I could hang, um, I did a Heinzeit piece that was the flip flops and I have those colors and so I think I might try to stitch this in those colors that way the pieces can kind of work together uh, this is waxing moon designs welcome to the nut house which that's 
that's the Newman household in a nutshell. Right there is the nut house. Um, and then this was also part of that. This is Blessings Abound by Plum Street, which I love the colors of. And again, have a lot of these um, flosses already. And I think this is great for a smalls. Um, and then I got this. Oh, there's more than one in here. This is called Furnished with Bees. This is by, this is called The Sampler Girl. This is called A Saturday Sampler is a design that can be stitched and assembled on a Saturday afternoon or weekend getaway. This is Saturday Sampler number four. Um, it has a um, published date of 2006. And it says, my banks, they are uh, my banks. They are furnished with bees whose murmur invite one to sleep. And it says, a few years ago, I took my son to a local nature center for a children's talk on bees. I had no idea there was so much to learn about bees. Of course, this buzzing bug is far more charming from a distance, but bees sure do enhance the spring and summer as they buzz about gathering goodies for their honey making. And so that poem is by a, a poet called William Shenstone. My banks, they are furnished with bees whose murmur invite one to sleep. And so I'll just show the cover or the, because the chart is on the rest of this, which I will cover up here. But there is the little design there. There we go. That's how I'll show it to you. So that chart. And then I got this, which is called Pumpkin Patches, and it is from Full Circle Designs. It came with the beads and the um, Just Another Button Company button. Poppy, I see you. I'm almost done. Okay, baby? And I think I might switch up the colors in this one as well. Don't know. Um, and then I got... Um, my cinnamon stars. This I got from one, two, three stitch because, um, I had everything ready to go on it. Um, but I needed the chart and then I got country spirits, summer gathering. And I think I talked about this chart, but I love it because of the watermelon and the blackbird. And I just need to find where to get the buttons. Um, and then the last one I got is from Blackbird Designs. I'm a huge Beatles fan, um, so uh, my goal is to now collect all of the charts from the Magical Mystery Tour series that Blackbird, and Design, Blackbird Designs did. And so the first one that I got is one of my favorite songs. It was actually written by Ringo. Go Ringo. Um, and this is a song that I used to sing to with my daughter when she was like an infant she used to sit in my lap and we would play the song on the computer and she'd bounce in my lap and um so this is octopus's garden and it says under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade and i so love this so my goal is now to get the other five at some point um in the series um from blackbird designs um and then I would love to maybe um, stitch them and have them going down the hallway. I think that would be kind of a neat um, vignette to have on the wall. Um, so I'm super excited. So, I, you know, I'm not wanting for any stitching, that's for sure. Um, maybe in my lifetime I'll get all this <laughs> stitched. Um, but um, that's going to be it for me this week. Um, if you like my video... Um, liked watching it please comment below please um you know click the like button follow me on instagram at doodlebook stitcher follow me on facebook donna newman um and i will hopefully see you back here next week with more stitching and in the meantime have a wonderful day and take care everybody bye bye <laughs>